we have this uh, software package called Vivo CQ or Vivo Contrast Quantification which allows us to analyze the signal a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, what it does is it takes the data points obtained uh, from this Cine loop uh, and, and uses curve fit algorithms to fit these perfusion curves. In this case uh, different ROIs can be drawn here in the tumor uh, here versus here for example and those uh, curves can be generated by the software. The software then is able to spit out not just uh, numbers associated with those curves, but also parametric images of things like peak enhancement, which has to do with relative blood volume, and then time to peak and wash in rate, which have to do with, with the actual blood flow. So this is the kind of uh, quantification, more in-depth analysis that can be done uh, with perfusion quantification using the contrast agent. We can also do targeted molecular imaging using the same microbubble contrast agent. We have streptavidinated bubbles here. Um, if you have a biotinylated antibody that can be used against uh, uh, endothelial targets um, such as uh, VEGFR2, PCAM, VCAM, and so on, um, these can be used with our system. And these are the kind of images that can be generated um, and the kind of data and analysis that can be done on, on those images. Here we're looking at a parametric image of VEGFR2 uh, expression, relative expression of this molecule uh, within the vasculature in a sub-Q tumor model. So this is an example of, of that kind of molecular imaging that can be done and, and the molecular data that can be generated. Our Vivo strain package allows us to analyze the different motions of the heart. The heart, of course, moves in, in longitudinal, radial, and circumferential fashion, and we want to be able to capture that and, and measure things like strain, strain rate, and so on. This is an example of, of Vivo strain, and, and this heart, if you compare it to some of the images that I showed earlier, it, it looks quite different. We don't have that nice pointy apex that we normally see. It's, it's actually quite ballooned out uh, at the far end um, to, the, to the left of that image um, of that video that's playing. Um, so we can see that this is actually an infarcted heart. We can then do different uh, types of analysis with this. We can um, uh, allow the software to do speckle tracking, which essentially tracks the movement of the heart very accurately, um, and then gives us data points which we can compare with each other. For example, you can see the blue point close to the base of the heart, and the, the data that can be generated with that, uh, things like velocity, uh, displacement, um, strain, as well as strain rate. And you can see this nice uh, periodic motion of that point there indicating uh, more like normal heart function. Versus the red point, which is out closer to the apex of the, of the heart, the heart, the part of the heart that's been damaged um, by that infarction, and you really see sort of uh, abnormal mo uh, velocity displacement strain as well as strain rate. Of course, there are many, many different uh, numbers that can be generated using this software. And this strain can often be an early indicator of cardiac dysfunction. Um, changes in strain can happen uh, before changes in things like cardiac output, ejection fraction, and so on. Along the lines of the uh, Vivo strain package, we also have the Vivo VASC package, which allows us to measure strain in, v in vasculature. This can be used in, in many different applications, such as atherosclerosis, where we're looking at changes in the vessel stiffness over time that occur as a result of atherosclerosis, but before those plaques are actually visible with ultrasound. So we can do many different calculations such as pulse propagation velocity to be able to determine elasticity, distensibility, uh, and stiffness of that vessel. In this case, we're looking at the, uh, the, the carotid and then the branches uh, going up to the internal and external carotid. 